All right, welcome back to part two of this epic transformation. In this video, Lisa and I are going to be installing this amazing head of hair. It's from Donabella. We are gonna show you exactly how we're gonna do this install for this, again, I keep calling it epic transformation. Isn't it, it really, epic? It's epic. It's epic. It's actually an anomaly. Honestly, we were just shocked that it, you're gonna see it, it's gonna match. Yeah. It's gonna match this and it's, Holy crap. We were shocked that the hair even worked the way that it worked. <laughs> we were skeptical, okay? We had a lot of odds against us. Lots of banding, lots of breakage. Better condition now? Absolutely. Than what she came in with, which is kind of crazy, but. This is the second day. She's coming in two, mm -hmm. two days. It took us eight hours, and then this is gonna take us about another couple what? hours. Before we move on, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a tutorial. You don't miss another installment. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm with this. <laughs> So we're gonna get started on installing this hair on this amazing head of hair that we transformed yesterday. And Lisa here has Donabella 22 inch hybrid weft extensions in oh, color 80. Tell them about what we're using right now. So we're about to try the Donabella extension holder, right? I guess that's what you call this. A, a strand organizer, I strand think. Strand organizer? Yeah. Yes. So I've never used one of these before. I'm very new to this. I usually always hold the extensions on my hand. Um, so here, go, here goes it, guys. This is new. This is new technology to me, right? <laughs> so you just put it through the teeth and it just stays. That's it? That's it. That's it. Let me show them on this side. Whoa! <laughs> oh my God. Right? Isn't it amazing? I told you you were gonna love it. Dude, that's such a game changer. Like, <laughs> hair's like not even, it's not tangled. It's like, it's still, oh, and like the prongs kind of separate the hairs a little bit so you can like grab it. You can like clip it here if you need to. Yeah, it's honestly pretty amazing because you can even put like eye links and yeah. care links, your tapes, look, anything I really. Even, like, I can even continue to wrap this. Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Literally. I can just wrap it. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. I told you you were gonna love it. That's why I was so excited to get it. Oh, happy birthday to me. <laughs> so if you wanna check out the strand organizer, be sure to check out the link in the description. I'm also gonna put a little coupon code in there for you so you can get this bad boy because seriously, it is a game changer. Not if I buy all of them first <laughs> for myself. All right, so we're actually just setting up by getting our loop tool here and our silicone beads. We're actually gonna be using blonde because that is what's gonna match her hair closest. And also we're gonna be using our blonde thread. And just something to remember when you are color matching for your thread and your silicone beads, you want to match it closest to the root area. And since our model's hair is completely blonde and white, we're gonna be using the lightest shade that Donabella offers. One of the main questions that I get asked is why are we using silicone beads? So the silicone beads, it actually has a little silicone inside of the bead itself, so it's gonna help cushion the hair since there's nothing else gonna be living in between this bead other than her natural hair. And the silicone is actually gonna help prevent the hair from slipping out. This is gonna be the safest method when doing a weft install. So here is a preview of what the hybrid weft extensions look like if you haven't seen them. They basically are as thin as hand tied, but you can cut them so they're not gonna unravel. So typically a hand tied weft extension is gonna have a little braid right here. So if you cut it, it's gonna unravel. These are machine bonded, but they're as thin as hand tied, meaning they are truly customizable and you don't have to worry about them unraveling. And honestly, they're pretty amazing. Hello. And what's kind of beautiful about the hybrid wefts is that you can double them up to make them look like volume, but they feel like hand ties. So they're the thinnest at the scalp, but they give you the most volume. And we'll break for your buck, honestly. All right, so Lisa and I are sectioning the very first row, and we're actually kind of just discussing exactly where that row is gonna lie, mostly because she has lots of breakage and we need as much fullness as possible. So we elected that we're gonna be doing a really deep U-shape. We are sectioning right now, but we're doing a really unique sectioning based off of the situation that she has. She has really great density right through here, when I flip up, oops, when I flip up, we see nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But we're having a little bit of issues 
right at that behind the ear hairline, we can see it. You can see that point right through here. Yep. So we're kind of making this really unique and we're gonna go a little bit higher and make an even deeper horseshoe. So we're gonna go kind of like this. So I took this beautiful little triangle. I met at this point, because this is where the density starts to thicken back up, so I don't need to take any more hair here. I really just need to take hair here. Yeah. So, let's see what that looks like. So we're gonna do the comb test. So place your comb here, flip up. Can't see it. Nope, so we did good. This is the, this is the point which is about an inch or an inch or so from the top of the ear from like the density problem. Mm -hmm. yep. But you can see why she has a density problem because of all of this. And with Donabella hair extensions, since they're so lightweight, we're hoping to grow this back out. All right, so here is the preview of the full sectioning you can see we took a really deep u shape here and what we're using now is kenra professional volume spray just to take down a lot of those little baby hairs and flyaways this is just a little hack that we like to use to keep the section even extra clean and i particularly love this hairspray because it is flake free and it's brushable so this is the perfect type of hairspray for an extension install now we're putting in the silicone beads on this entire row and it's really important to take kind of like a triangular u-shaped section here because you want to be able to have an anchor piece on each side and what i'm using here is the lux tool from donabella to go ahead and adjust those beads it's also really important that your bead is laying nice and flat to the hair and the way you do this is by over directing it completely down and flat to the head and then securing it by standing right in front of your bead so those are just kind of like our little tips that we like to teach to make sure that again it's laying nice and flat that's the most important part and that also it feels comfortable if it doesn't then you need to readjust the bead and always communicate to your client and ask her how does it feel? And if there's something pinching or pulling or anything at all, it's really important to address it now. So that way you don't need to go back in and take it all apart. What you just saw Lisa do is just kind of pull it up and make sure that it felt nice and comfortable for her as well. This is the entire row installed and now this is gonna be a nice anchor piece on each side of these beads. And it's also laying kind of lower on that back section and the reason for that is because we just did a bleach and tone yesterday so her scalp is probably a little bit more tender than normal so we just left a little bit of extra wiggle room right there for her and now we are taking this entire eight foot long weft and measuring her hair out we're going to be putting in a total of four wefts on this one row and the reason for that is because even though she has tons of breakage, the interior is very, very thick. And like I mentioned earlier, she has very coarse hair. So putting four rows in this row or four wefts, I should say, in this row was imperative to make the density match with what she had going on originally. Once you have it measured out, you just simply cut the excess off and we still have enough for another row of four wefts. So we just cut the extensions because there's eight feet of hybrid weft with the full pack. And obviously we have extra because this is gonna be her second row. And guess what? Guess where this goes? Right there. Woo! And she just hangs out. I know, it's amazing. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, so Lisa is just cleaning up the section before we get started. We actually already have our needle and thread. And something to note is we are doubling up this thread. So what that means is we have two sides to the thread. Okay, do you see that? And the very, very end is knotted off into just a simple knot. So literally just a not sailor's knot i don't know yeah. yeah all right so we're gonna get the stitching started lisa's gonna start it off and she is gonna show you a super cool hack on how to literally get it started with so much ease because it's 
like the anchor piece it's like a lot of people have tons of different ways that they do it but this is the simplest way and it's gonna blow your mind all right so rule of thumb i always put the clips in between all every single one of the beads the reason why i do that keeps it super secure this is not going anywhere it's not shifting at all and typically the anchor starts at the beginning however we like to anchor three beads in reason being this whole side will always get the most heat the most uh, wear and tear people sleep on the sides of their head they're typically touching the sides of their head and typically the the what the hell the temples temple. yeah the temple is the most brittle so i want the most protection and that's why i'm going to double up all these stitches and you're going to see how one two and three beads in we'll start so i'm going to readjust this just a little bit when we do our beading we do a triangle so you can literally see i'm going to use this to point that's one tip of the triangle and that's the other tip of the triangle so we're going to start with the most internal one so we're going to start here so we're going to go pick up all the wefts we're not going in with the bead and we're gonna hold our string. Okay, cool. Here's the mind blown part, okay? So instead of creating a knot, we obviously already have our string tied off. We're gonna go through our already pre-existing knot, pull it all the way through, and then watch the magic happen. Oops, does it get stuck? Don't forget to clean up that mustache. Boom! Anchored. We can clean this up too. There we go. Boom. Already anchored. That's it. That simple. That easy. So we've anchored it. We've gone through our pre-existing knot that we created on our string. Awesome. Now we go to the top of the other part of the triangle, making sure to get all four of those wefts. Bada bing, bada boom. And we're gonna create our first cross stitch. We're gonna get this out of our way. Okay, see how I'm holding this? I'm gonna go through the loop, keeping control of your string at all times, and then, boom, voila. That's it. That easy. That simple. And then just keep going. The reason why we do the double stitching is I personally think that the double stitching, or the, sorry, the double loop with the string is stronger than a single string. That's just my personal preference though. All right, so I'm gonna move this guy out of my way. Yeah, and now we're just gonna work towards the exterior. Yep. Or towards her face. Boom. And stitch on each side of those little triangles that she was talking about. Yep. And I think the trick here too is pulling up. We get lots of questions on my videos of like, how do you get the stitching to like lay mm. on top here? And mm -hmm. it's the pulling up motion. Over directing. Yeah, over directing. Mm -hmm. Pulling it up and out of your way. You don't want to pull towards you, you want to pull away from you. Boom, same thing. So I'm going to show you keeping your section pulling up. Though. So we're See literally mm -hmm. tugging against. So the string should literally be stuck against her head. Yeah. Not too hard, you know, just enough to kind of secure that knot. And that's it. So then I'm gonna take out this one. What I like to do sometimes, sorry, is I will put a clip right underneath to secure um, the bottom half of the extension. All right, so this is the typical anchor. This is where most people start their extensions is that front anchor. So I'm gonna show you a little hack on that too. Remember pulling against the head, not too tight, but tight enough. All right, so we're, we've met the end of the road, okay? That's the top of that triangle that we have. I'm gonna keep this out of my way. We're gonna go through, obviously. Nice gentle tug, except this last stitch is going to get three stitches and on the last third stitch it's going to get three cross stitches so this is stitch number two oops clean that up 
stitch number two, and then we're going to go stitch number three, except, so we've gone through it once, we're going to go through it twice, and then three times for good luck. Now this part you don't want to just yank up, because you can create a knot in the string, you don't want to do that. So you want to gently drag down, pull, drag down, pull, drag down, pull. It's starting to create the knot. See those three cross stitches? Pull down, pull up, pull down, pull up. And then I literally push it against the extension. And it creates a knot. So this is your first time doing this technique. I would definitely recommend doing it on a mannequin first mm -hmm. so you can kind of get the technique down. But this is, I would call this more like an advanced for sure. technique. For sure. But I do challenge for all the beginners to never start at the at the base or at the, the front anchor. Always start three stitches in or three beads in. That's just my rule of thumb and I feel like it saved a lot of people from having to refix their work. And I do like to say that the first three stitches are never the prettiest. These have the most stitching on them, so they're not going to be the most aesthetically pleasing. And you know what? I'm not looking for aesthetics, okay? I'm looking for functionality, all right? So tell us about why you left this out. Okay, so this is a lip. This is also a very advanced way of thinking, but what I could do is I could just cut this off and call it a day. However, I leave a little bit because I am gonna cut it for sure, but I'm actually gonna anchor this little bit with another bead and another stitch at the very, very end. What that does is it secures the, the flaps from flapping up, because that seems to be a common point of uh, contention with a lot of people. And since it's the most brittle, I want to have the most protection right around her temple as possible. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Look at that stitching. Look how nice and clean that is. Mm -hmm. So we're almost done with this bottom row. And we're just going to add in one more to complete her look. So she's just going to have a total of two rows of extensions. Mm -hmm. But we are so excited. But four... Four wefts. Four wefts, yes. yeah. Two rows, Two rows four, four wefts. wefts. Yeah. We have a lip, right? You don't, only, you don't want to leave that. Okay, so I'm going to pin this back. Mm -hmm. Boop. But I know it's going to be sitting right here. So I'm not going to grab the hair from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my comb. And I'm going to section. Boop. There's a hair that's stuck. There we go. Section this out of my way. A little bit of hairspray to clean up all that fuzz. There we go. Nice mm -hmm. and clean. You don't want baby hairs in this because it'll hurt her. So what you want to do is you want to take a section right here because that's where that lip is. I'm obviously going to cut off the excess. But when I let this go, the lip is gonna be right in here. So I wanna take a bead and put it right here to anchor that lip. So remembering that my, my anchor is gonna stop right here. So I'm gonna take this little section of hair. You do want it to be kind of shallow and you want the top of the bead to sit with the same level of the end of the extension. Keeping this close to the head because you want to get those baby hairs into the bead. So nice and close, pull through, hold it there, boop. Now, we don't ever bead like that, right? Mm -mm. No, ma'am. <laughs> so we take here and we pivot, oops. So never straight up and down, pivot, get as close to the scalp as possible, and then gently clamp. Now, I messed up because <laughs> it's poking out of the head like that. And that's a no-no. No-no. No-no-no. It's probably because I got my camera kind of close here. Yeah. So you can't really see. Filming and, and doing hair is really hard, you guys. Yeah, it really is. Just want to let you know. That's better. Much better. <laughs> now it's flush. Yeah. So you want it to be nice and flat like that. Mm-hmm. 
So this is the excess string that I have. This is the rest of the string that I used for her stitching. I'm gonna create a knot. Boop. And boop. And then do a little tug a rooney. Okay. And then we're gonna do one more, except I'm actually gonna go through the bead. So this is the only bead whenever you do the move ups that you actually have to remove and then redo, which is totally fine. Cause this is what's gonna give you the longevity. So you're gonna go right, ooh, it's a little snug, there we go. You're gonna go right behind the bead, but you're not gonna tug too hard though. Cause if you tug too hard, you'll pull the bead out and like it'll pop through the extension. So you just wanna tug just enough. There we go. And that's it. So this secured the lip that was created from this part of the extension. Cause now I'm going to cut that off. This is definitely an extra step. And I usually only do it with those who have really fine hair or have a lot of density problems with their temple. This just secures everything and makes sure that this is going to lay flush for the rest of her installment until I see her in the next uh, 10 weeks. So oh, this is the excess. Putting it nice and close. Perfect, that lays nice and flat to her head. Yeah. So now this, this doesn't flip up. This just stays nice attached to your head. Flat. Now the entire row is completely installed. You can already see how beautiful this is looking. That stitching is perfect. It's laying nice and flat and it feels really comfortable. Now we're going to add in one more row. So this entire look is simply made up of two rows. We did decide to add in some eye links, which we'll show you in just a second, but we wanted to show you this sectioning here, how deep and U-shaped it was. So that way we could get the ultimate blend. We're still doing the little comb trick just to make sure exactly where it's gonna lie and where it's also going to start. And because again, she had some breakage from before she even came to see us, we know that we need to start this weft a little further back and this is where the eye links are gonna come into play a little later. We're adding in some more silicone beads on this row, exactly how the other row was done. So I'm just gonna zoom right past this. I think you guys got the idea from this point on and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna measure out the four wefts on this row and sew it in the exact same manner that Lisa did. And then we're gonna go in with a final detail of eye links. Now we still gotta do a little bit of cutting and blending, but something that we did notice is that there was a lack of fullness right on that front hairline, which is why we decided to use eye links, just a few of them, closer to the hairline. Something that you might notice is that the bead looks a little different than the silicone bead we were using before. So these are called flare beads. So the flare bead is like a little flute and you still install them the exact same way, but it allows for, in my opinion, a little better hold on these eye links specifically. So I'm just gonna add about four to five right here, just a few rows, again, for that added density along the hairline. I personally like doing care links or eye links to customize the wefts. It just looks really beautiful and seamless. And honestly, I typically do this to almost every single weft install now is adding either the care links or the eye links. I leave that preference up to the client. We just use one pack, but definitely give it a go. Okay, so this wraps up the final video of this epic transformation. Yes, it took two it, days. Two days, and if you guys don't love this, I, I don't know what you love. You because guys don't love hair. <laughs> Seriously. Honestly. Because that transformation, first of all, the blonde video. Again, if you want to check out that video, check in the description, the link. Um, but I, I keep, we, we took how many photos? How many photos did we take? Easily a thousand? A thousand. Videos, easily. Videos, photos indoor outdoor just everywhere and every single one was looked amazing looked amazing we I, I think we're gonna have a really hard time figuring like, out like one which just like what's the one if we post this for a year long mind your business <laughs> it's that good we're over here transforming bad bitches okay you know, bad bitch love only thank you if you loved this 
hair extension tutorial. It was a little mini tutorial. I'll give you some tips and tricks from Lisa over here. Be sure to comment down below what your favorite part was. And then also make sure you follow Lisa on her YouTube. She's trying to grow it, you guys. And she does an amazing job. Love me. Also, yeah, if you want to, um, you're down for hair transformation yourself, you can actually message the salon at Rebel Femme. We would love to take you as a client. Yeah, I was going to say. love to transform you. It's been a long two days. It has. <laughs> I think we've what? Eight hours yesterday, what's well, been 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. Yeah. Five hours a day. So I think yes. this whole, like, whole transformation took uh, 13 hours. Yeah. And if you have any questions about anything at all, please drop it down below. Oh, Lisa yeah. and I will answer them for you. So glad you're here and thanks be for following. Thanks for following. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure to follow my Instagram, TikTok, and Morella Manelli, the <laughs> Morella Manelli in the house, baby. <laughs> And if you want more free education right to your inbox, be sure to go to morellaminelli.com and sign up for my newsletter so you can get free education there. Mm. And what else? Oh yeah, I got a podcast. Be sure oh, to yeah. listen in to my podcast called Hair B&B. She shares a lot of tips and tricks about taxes and money and how to be a good stylist. So I definitely recommend to listen to that because I learned a lot of things about saving money. She taught yeah. me how to open up an IRA account. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor. She's not, so. but she's pretty awesome. <laughs> You should listen to So me. you need financial advice, seek a CPA for that. Thanks so much for listening, guys, or watching, listening. Listen. Look at me, I'm thinking it's looking podcast crap mm -hmm. here. Listening, but thanks watching. for watching, and I'll see you next the video. Thank you.